one of these three men is the world's foremost portrait photographer. What is your name, please? My name is Yusuf Gosh. What is your name, please? My, my name is Joseph Kosh. What is your name, please? My name is Yusuf Kosh. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Yusuf Kosh and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Tony, first in the world of home beauty. Tony and all its wonderful products have made it possible for every woman to have natural loveliness in the comfort of her own home. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Polly Bergen. Then Mr. Don Amici. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. First things first, so Polly, awful nice to have you back, and boy, were we proud of you. Oh, thank you very much. All right, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Yusuf Karsh, am a portrait photographer. I was born abroad, but have lived for the past 26 years in Canada. My portraits have been exhibited in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Museum of Modern Art, and many others. Ninety-six of my pictures have just been published in book form under the title Portraits of Greatness. Portraits in the book include Winston Churchill, taken in London in 1956, Ernest Hemingway, photographed in Havana, Pope Pius XII, photographed in the Vatican, a picture of Prince Ranier and Princess Grace, which was made into a Moroccan postage stamp, Dr. Albert Schweitzer, whom I photographed at his hometown in Alsace, and George Bernard Shaw, who was almost 90 years old at the time. I have probably taken pictures of more celebrated men and women than any other photographer of our time. Signed, Yusuf Karsh. <laughs> Panel, you heard these three distinguished gentlemen all claim to be Yusuf Karsh world's foremost portrait photographer. And when our guests are comfortably seated, are you ready, gentlemen? Sure. And we'll begin our first round of questioning tonight with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Buzz. I'm so impressed at seeing uh, Mr. Karsh, number one, two, or three, in front of me that I can barely think of anything to say. But uh, number one, uh, where do you live in Canada? Ottawa. Ottawa? Yes. Uh, number two, where did you photograph George Bernard Shaw? In London. Number three, where did you photograph Mr. Shaw? In London. Uh, number one, uh, number three, do you know, um, who is Carlton Smith? Carlton Smith? Really, I, I don't know a photographer by the name Carlton Smith. Uh-huh. Um, number one, where did you photograph Pope Pius? Uh, in Rome, Vatican. In the Vatican. Oh. In what room in the Vatican? Uh, throne, uh, in the throne room. Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, number two, could you tell me what occasion would a portrait photographer have to use a jeweler's loop, a jeweler's magnifying glass? It's very difficult to say. Number one, do you have as much difficulty saying? <laughs> it's difficult to I ask these questions, it. fella. I what don't is... know. I never used it. You know what it might be used for? What occasion might a portrait photographer have to use, number one? Uh, a naked filament. On uh, of a of a of a lamp of a small watt uh, lamp, light. Don't understand the question. Me either. Number three, <laughs> Polly Bergen. Well, I'm like Kitty. I'm terribly impressed because I saw several of the portraits that were taken uh, in one of the magazines, and they were just the most magnificent mm -hmm. things I've ever seen. Number three, under the portrait of of Ernest Hemingway, if I remember correctly. There were some observations of yours as to his character after having taken his photograph. Could you tell me what those observations were? Number three. Number three. Um, 
I would say there was a reference to his being the shyest person I have photographed. Number one, could you tell me? Yes, he is the shyest person. Number two, could you tell me what was written under the photograph that was shown in the magazine, your observations on Mr. Hemingway? He is a very shy person. Uh, what was he very wearing? Very reluctant. Uh, Don Amici. Number one, uh, uh, generally speaking, what camera do you use? I use a view camera. Number two. Which is uh, uh, eight by ten. Number two. Uh, view camera eight by ten. Number three. View camera. Uh, number uh, number one. What speeds do you generally shoot them uh, indoors? Indoors. That I can tell you. Number because two. It's always different. What speed do you generally use in, in normal life? I would use different speed. I beg your pardon. I would use different speed. It depends what I like to do. Uh, number three, what... To... Sorry, Don, that's all we have time for. We'll have to vote now, and as usual, without consultation. So if you will kindly mark your ballots, and when doing so, select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, of course, as usual, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Panel, have you all voted? Everybody, Polly, for whom did you vote? Uh, we really didn't get very much information. I think it was mainly our fault because we didn't ask any very intelligent questions, probably, but... <laughs> well, I mean, Kitty did. <laughs> Kitty asked a couple of very bright questions, but I didn't. And uh, the ones that were asked, uh, we didn't get very many answers. So I thought it was number one, but I voted for number three because... <laughs> Number three has long hair. <laughs> and uh, he looks, I mean, he has the appearance of an artist, and I think that he would have to be a very great artist to have taken these photographs. Don, your vote. I voted for number three. I agree with Polly about there being a very uh, uh, distinct lack of information here, <laughs> so this is pure guess on my part. Kitty, which one do you think is the real one? Number three. Polly took all the words out of my mouth. We didn't ask very good questions. Number three does look like an artist, and Mr. Karsh is a great artist. Tom? Uh, number three, I disqualified... Oh. I voted for number three, too. I disqualified number two in my mind because uh, too often he agreed with what one and three said, you know, and uh, that may not make much sense, but, but you know what I mean. He didn't volunteer any new information. Number and number one... I think it's one. You think it's one? I do, really, yes. Mm -hmm. I do well, I better shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have the unanimous vote for number three at making up your mind solidly, and we'll find out now how right or wrong we are as we discover which one of these three distinguished gentlemen is the world's foremost portrait photographer. The Willa Real, Yusuf Karsh. Please stand up. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. It's a great honor to have you with us. Apparently, you did real well there. Now, that's, that's what does he great. think of the photography on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Garth. You may be seated if you will, sir. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Don Fritz. I'm a stage director and I have a, have a dramatic school in New York City. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do. My name is Dr. Yax. I'm an mentalist lecturer and handwriting analyst. I bet you could have a field day with us. Well, in checking the score here, we find a solid vote for the right one. That means no incorrect uh, votes. But in that case, of course, from Tony, $150 will be uh, apportioned among you. And I thank you very much for being with us. On your way out, you will find a gift package of all of Tony's wonderful products for the ladies in your respective families. Good night, gentlemen, and God bless you. Good night. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Janie Hart. What is your name, please? My name is Janie Hart. What is your name, please? My name is Janie Hart. Once again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Janie Hart, am the wife of a United States Senator from the state of Michigan. 
Since I am a licensed helicopter pilot, I flew my husband about the state during his campaign for the Senate. I am a qualified multi-engine airplane pilot and fly my own twin-engine Beechcraft. I am a captain in the Civil Air Patrol. I have flown in three powder puff derbies, the most recent this year. I am also the mother of eight children. Signed, Janie Hart. Three ladies this time, panel, each claiming to be Janie Hart, helicopter pilot and wife of Senator from Michigan, Hart. Are you comfortably settled, ladies, and ready to play? Very well, let's start this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. I'll ask him as quick as I can now. Number three, uh, when you leave a helicopter and the engine is still running, uh, what's the one noticeable thing that everyone does automatically? You get out of the wind. <laughs> Uh, number two, what is, the, what is the thing that everyone does when they leave Duck. a helicopter? Huh? <laughs> Duck. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is uh, the firewall in an airplane, please? Um, it is where the, uh, it's in front of the pilot, uh, where the instrument panel is. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is a pylon eight? Again? Yes, I'll get this question, yes. <laughs> a pylon eight is a maneuver of figure eight that you fly. Uh, well, can you tell me number one? Polly Bergen. Uh, number two, it says your husband is a senator from the state of Michigan. Uh, what is Battle Creek, Michigan famous for? Serial. Uh, number one, I, I used to live there, that's all I know. <laughs> number one, uh, what's an F turn? It's a turn in the shape of an F. What, why, uh, when is it generally used? <clears throat> number two, could you tell me? Well, if you're coming into an airport, you might have to do a lot of F-turns waiting for your turn in line. Uh, number three, um, it says that you, you are qualified multi-engine airplane. How many multi, how many engines? Two. Just two? Just two. <laughs> well, why doesn't it say two-engine airplane? Did, did, does a three-engine, is a four-engine a multi-two? Yes. I see. The multi plus two. I see. Thank you. Num Don Amici. Number two, what is the price of, uh, of your twin engine beach? About $65,000. Uh, number three, what is the cruising speed of, uh, of this beach, this twin engine? Oh, about uh, 160, I guess. Number one, uh, uh, what is the forward speed of a helicopter? Um, about 90 miles an hour. Number three, what is the name of the single engine uh, uh, Beechcraft popular airplane? Number two? Bonanza. Uh, number one, what is uh, Governor Williams' wife's first name? Um, Nancy. Uh, number, uh, number three, what did you say the cruising speed of, of uh, Twin Engine Beach is? About 160. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, how many hours do you need uh, of flying for a license? Um, you need 40 hours uh, in total and some part of that is in uh, dual time. Number two, when you're approaching the control tower, what do you give uh, in terms of information? You give what they ask you to give, your position, your altitude. But how do you contact them? Well, you uh, tune in the tower frequency. Which do you is give your name or a number to start you with? You give your a number and the name of your airplane. Number three, what? That's all we have time for. Once again, we've come up to time to vote before landing the plane. So without right. consultation, From everything. will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Everybody set? No. Everybody's looking very thoughtful. Mark your ballots. I marked, uh, bud. Well, I marked, but I'm not <laughs> OK, all set. Polly, whom did you yes. vote this time? Uh, it was very tough. I, it was very close between one and two. Uh, I, I don't know truly, uh, truthfully very much about airplanes, uh, except how you sit in them and fasten the seatbelt. <laughs> but uh, I voted for two, but it could just as easily be one. I don't think it's number three. Don? I voted for number two. I thought she gave the. Uh, all the correct answers, price of the plane. Kitty? Speed. They all knew everything. I voted for number one because I thought she looked the safest. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, your selection. With eight children, huh, Kitty? Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I voted, 
Never mind your reason, Tom. It's all right. <laughs> Leave it alone at that. Goodbye, I... Mother. <laughs> it was a real for... nice show, and we enjoyed it. I voted for number two. Get a load of the look in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There you have it, in a manner of speaking. So let's find out... Which, I don't know, which one of these three ladies is the real helicopter pilot, wife of Senator Hart, mother of eight children? Will the real Janie Hart please stand up? Thank you very much, Jenny Hart. Some kinship. We both have the same name. <laughs> ah, that's right. Uh, now, number two, you who garnered three of the, vo of the four votes, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? I'm Mrs. John Norris from Irvington on Hudson. I'm a housewife and the mother of two children. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. <laughs> I guess you'd call her a safer flyer, wouldn't yeah. you? Does she fly? But yeah, I don't know. Do you fly? Yes, oh, she's a well. That's the dirtiest trick. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Would you, would you yeah, tell yeah. us your yeah. real name and what you do, please? Please, hold it just a minute. I want to introduce number three, and then we can post-mortem. My name is Pat Alexander, and I'm the secretary with Avon Products here in New York, and I, uh, as you may guess, have never flown a plane in my life. <laughs> Any, uh, any unfair, meaty comments you'd like dirty to make? Pool. Unfair, dirty pool. Anything else, Tom? You say that number two was married to a senator as well, and besides flying, I think that's really going too far. <laughs> <laughs> married, married, married to a judge? No, she's married to a judge. Are you married to a senator? No, a judge. A, a judge. judge. Oh. <laughs> a little bit <laughs> All right, in checking our score, then we know that it was that was just. Uh, uh, three incorrect votes at uh, $250 each for a total of $750 from Tony. And ladies, on your way out, you'll find what I know you can use, a gift package of all of Tony's wonderful products, although none of you needs them. They're nice to have. Thank you. Good night to you, good luck, and God bless you all. <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. Is your name, please? My name is Jerry Daggett. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Daggett. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Daggett. Once again, panel, will you follow along as I read this affidavit? I, Jerry Daggett, am an honor roll student in the eighth grade at St. Veronica's School in New York City. I also play guard for the Tompkinsville Federals in the National Pee Wee Football League. I was selected for the all-star team from Staten Island. One day about two weeks ago, I was playing football when I heard a scream for help. A volunteer fireman had fallen from a jetty into 30 feet of icy water. He couldn't swim and he was drowning. I jumped in and kept him afloat until a police helicopter arrived and completed the rescue. Last week, I was given an act of heroism award by the city of New York. Signed, Jerry Daggett. Three fine-looking young men, you'll agree, panel, all claiming to be Jerry Daggett, who saved a man's life. And we'll start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Number one, what do you study in the eighth grade? Religion, English, spelling, mathematics, and social studies. Number two, how do you spell illegal? I-L-L-E-G-A-L. Kathy, did you get that? <laughs> she asked me tonight before I came, and I couldn't remember whether it was A-L or L-E. <laughs> Uh, number three, where exactly did this happen, where this volunteer Well, fell? this was on uh, Midland. Uh, it's, it's in Midland. It's like a county in Staten Island. We were playing football at a field there, and I heard the scream, and the boys playing was we ran over to this peninsula, or not, yeah, uh, it was like a jetty, and we, had, we saw the man out in the water screaming and hollering, so we ran out, I ran out, and I jumped off the jetty, and I saved him. Don Amici. Uh, number two, what system of football do you use? Pardon? What system of football do you use? Well, we play 11-man football. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Oh, number one, what system of football do you play? Do you mean the formation? Yeah, what formation do you use? Uh, we use the single wing. Single wing. Uh, number uh, two, what is next Tuesday, December 8th? 
Number I three? Know. I'm sorry, I don't Number know. one. What is next Tuesday, December 8th? Uh, number, uh, number two, what were you wearing when the cry for help came? I was wearing a leather jacket and a shirt, pants. Uh, number number three, what did you do with all the clothes that you had on? Well, I just took off my uh, jacket and my shoes and I went in. Uh, number one, how long, Kitty? Well, I'm terribly pleased to be able to ask these gentlemen something because I read about this story and I was very <clears> eager <throat> to know. Number three, how long were you in the water before the police came to save you and the fellow you were helping to uh, save? We were in about 30, 20 to 30 minutes. What kind of an arm thing did you hold, use to hold him up? Uh, when, when, what do you mean, when the uh, helicopter came? No, before, in the water. Number well, two, you answer that. Number two, what did you <coughs> hold to use him up? <coughs> well, I, I held him over my back, I'm, actually. I was leaning on the rocks, and I held him over my back, and I held his arm over my back, and I lay on the rocks myself. He oh, was, you were not actually uh, treading water or anything? No, I wasn't. I see. But it was 30 minutes? No, it was about seven minutes. What did you say it was, number three? I said between 20 and 30 minutes. And you say it was seven minutes? Yes. How long was it, number one? I say about seven minutes. Number three, can you tell me, um, what was he wearing? He was wearing all his clothes? Yes. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number one, uh, what is red dogging? Don't know. Do you know number two? Yes, sir. Red dogging is when a uh, defensive linebacker breaks through the gap. He shoots the gap, and he chases after the uh, ball-carrying halfback, fullback, or <clears throat> quarterback. Maybe you could tell me uh, what mouse trapping is. No, sir. Do you know number one? No, number three. No, who is uh, the defensive guard? Who are the two defensive guards on the uh, New York Giants football team? Number two, please. I'm sorry. Number two. Do you know number one? Um, what the Roosevelt three is? And uh... that's it. Time to vote without finding out. Bobby Bray, would you please mark your ballots, panel, and vote as usual for number one, or for number two, or number three. Everybody voted. Oh, that Polly oh, fooled you It was between time. one and two again, and I had one, and I switched to two. Uh, uh, I don't know why, but it's just a feeling I have. It's number two. I went, I went through about the same mental process, <laughs> excepting I stayed with number one. <laughs> well, I thought it was number one in uh, the setting of the I don't know. <laughs> okay, I kidding. voted for number three. I am very, very fond of the New York Police Department and have great confidence in them, but I do not believe that they arrived within seven minutes. In any event, in that cold water, it seemed like 30 minutes. Tom? I voted for number two. Uh, I guess I thought they did get there in seven minutes. <laughs> well, he... He definitely knew uh, uh, what uh, a guard should know about red dog. It's very important to a guard. It can be important to a lot of people. But, uh, well, he knew about some of the defensive linemen on the Giants anyway. And I figured a guard would probably know, especially if he's a, a, a all-star team player. Okay, there you have it. Now, we voted. For good or evil, we'll discover right now whether we did well or not as we've learned which one of these three young men really saved a man's life. So will the real Jerry Dykus. Please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry, very much, John. Thank you. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is James Boy. I kind of go to collegiate school in Manhattan. Thank you. Please tell us your real name. My name is John Kavakovich, and I attend Rhodes School in New York. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, we check our votes this time. We find there were, again, three incorrect votes at $250 each. Not bad for you, young men. That's a total of $750 from Tony. You will receive a gift package of all of Tony's wonderful products for your mother's, probably, or the lady in your life. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night, gentlemen, and God bless you. Just by way of setting the record rather quickly straight because of the unfair screams from our panel on that one spot with the three ladies, our number two lady, she does have a pilot's license, but she's not married to a senator. She does not live in Michigan. She's never flown a helicopter. She is not licensed for multi-engine planes, has never flown in a powder puff derby, and she does not have eight children, so we figured you had plenty to go on. Yeah. <laughs> there in the last analysis. I still say it's rotten. Well, it's all yeah. the time we have for tonight. <laughs> In Denmark or out of Denmark, we thought we played it fair and square with you. Except we want to tell all of you that, to tell the truth, will not be seen next week because of a special show 
Christmas at the Circus. But don't forget to look for us two weeks from now. We'll be back at the same old stand. Good night, panel. Good night, Bud. Bud Collier speaking for the Tony Company and saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Bodman Productions, in association with the CBS Television Network. It's Bergen Gone by Wilmot.